The Senate passed the Access to Baby Formula Act Thursday to address the current baby formula shortage impacting parents across the nation. The bill, which passed by unanimous consent, will grant the U.S. Department of Agriculture authority to waive certain requirements so that vulnerable families can continue purchasing safe infant formula with WIC benefits. The bill also ensures that WIC participants are better protected during a product recall. This shortage comes after a recall from major manufacturing plant Abbott Nutrition in February. Abbott's facility in Michigan voluntarily recalled several infant formula products, including Similac. The Senate Majority Leader hailed the vote as a great example of bipartisan action. A panel of CDC advisors have voted to recommend children between the ages of 5 and 11 receive the COVID-19 booster shot. The vote passed in a convincing 11 to 1 ruling with one abstinence. Abstin abstention, excuse me. The endorsement has come mere days after the Food and Drug Administration authorized a third shot of Pfizer's vaccine to elementary age children five months following their last dose. Children between the ages of 5 and 11 will receive just one-third of the regular dosage that's given to everyone 12 and older. CDC Director Dr. Rochelle Walensky is expected to accept the panel's endorsement and improve the recommendation. The U.S. Senate approved a $40 billion aid bill for Ukraine on Thursday. The legislation would help fund military and humanitarian efforts in the war-torn country as it continues to defend itself against Russia's attacks. The measure passed the House earlier this month and now goes to President Biden. Aid to Ukraine has widely received bipartisan support, but not all lawmakers are on board with some Republican senators taking issue on the cost. They've also argued that European countries aren't contributing enough. Earlier this month, 11 Republican senators voted against advancing the bill. Senate Minority Leader Mitch McConnell has shown strong disapproval for those that don't support the bill. McConnell said Thursday that anyone concerned about the cost of supporting a Ukrainian victory should consider the much larger cost if Ukraine loses. President Biden is in South Korea this morning. It's his first trip to Asia as president. And while much of the trip's focus will be on trade and economic development with some key allies, the president is also sending a message to China, North Korea and Russia. NBC's Chris Pallone has more. President Biden's first trip to Asia since taking office, a symbolic visit delivering messages to the U.S.'s allies and adversaries. Reassuring several of our key allies in the Indo-Pacific uh, about the United States' ongoing support uh, for them, for their security, for their open and democratic societies uh, in the face of challenges. The presidential visit to South Korea and Japan, a sign of unity with key allies in the face of growing military and economic threats from North Korea, China and Russia. The message we're trying to send on this trip is a message of an affirmative vision of what the world can look like uh, if the democracies and open societies of the world stand together to shape the rules of the road. The president arrives in Seoul a day after welcoming the leaders of Finland and Sweden at the White House as they apply to join NATO. It is so important. America's alliances in Europe and in Asia keep us and I would argue the world strong and secure. The president leaves behind several pressing issues which have driven down his public approval ratings, the baby formula shortage, the war in Ukraine, and soaring gas prices. We are working with oil producing countries around the world. This will be a topic uh, when the president is uh, uh, in Asia. While in South Korea and Japan, the president will highlight partnerships with Asian companies, which the White House says will create jobs in the U.S. and help alleviate supply chain issues driving the recent spike in consumer prices. Chris Pallone, NBC News, Washington.